So you're not too small, but, but make it relevant. Make it good for the journals. Um, yeah, travel agents, gain on humans. I mean, there's a, there's, most of what you do is more interesting than you realize. Because like, even for me, I love my job, but you know, it's my company, but still it's deadlines and work. And to the clients in the room, it's not your work that I ever feel like that. Uh, but you know, make it easy for them. Uh, a pincer movement. And what I mean by that is, you can very effectively get into Google News these days without spending very much money at all. And if you write a well-written press release, you can get it out on the web. Um, we'll give you some web uh, addresses that you can go to and do this for yourselves. Um, but then you can follow up with a particular journalist. You then actually have a web link with a press release on the web with links to other information for them. You call them direct, say, listen, I, I just wondered, could you give me your email address, your direct one, because I have something I think you might be interested in. Uh, if I can email you a link, then you can decide. If you want to, I'll put my phone number and my email back and feel free to get in touch. So, you know, it doesn't hurt. Y you also um, can use direct contacts. You remember the database thing? It doesn't just apply to customers, for example, or networking partners. You should be keeping a database of anyone that you come across, put the business cards into it, and categorize them. How would, could they be useful either now or in the future? Journalists, over time, you might meet them at a drinks function. You, they might be a friend of a friend, uh, but they might read, contact you for a story and not run with it. But if you've got them for next time, they're in your database. Give them a call. Hey, guess what we're doing? Uh, media directories. Uh, these exist in most advanced markets around the world and across many languages. Uh, for example, in the United Kingdom, The Guardian has a very good media guide. Uh, they have two versions. One of them is the really souped up industrial one that gets you to uh, Jeremy Paxman's personal assistant and people like that, that you may want to want to know. So, uh, you know, those things are, are for sale for 20 bucks at Waterstones in London. So, you know, you find a good media directory and, and work it. All of this is old media. None of this is, is the new stuff we're going to come to. But all of this can sell stuff for you. Somebody reads about you. Uh, we've covered some of this, you know, distribution. In terms of distribution, low cost in order, web wire for $19.95 US. You can write a press release, open an account with them, and you can get it on Google News 20 minutes from now. Um, PR web, slightly more expensive, slightly broader reach. All of these are just .com to get to them. PR Newswire, again, a deeper penetration into the market. They charge more, but they also have a greater likelihood of getting you into the business press, into the travel journalists' inboxes. Um, again, call them, use media guides, use your database. Google keywords, um, if you don't yet know what that means, this is going to sound funny, but Google, Google keywords, and learn about Google keywords. It basically, Google works on certain parameters, and one of them is the actual phrases that other people type in when they're looking for information. Those web, uh, those PR the things, they live forever, as far as I can tell at the moment. Um, so whether you do or don't get picked up immediately as a news story, it will then crop up some weeks later on Google general results for certain keywords. So if you think you know which keywords people would find you on, on Google, and again, you could research that. You could actually ask your customers, how did you find us? If it was Google, do you remember how you found us with keywords? Um, you could have those keywords peppered quite strongly into what you write in the press release, and then Google later will slurp it back up and put it up into hopefully one of the top 10 results for those keywords for future services. Uh, future searches. The last one is critically important. If you get media coverage and you have direct contact with the journalist, thank them, call them, email them. It doesn't have to sound like a total uh, suck up if that's not an offensive term. I mean, it's genuine. You know, you say, you know what? And the way that we do it is we thank them for the quality of their writing. Similarly, if they made a mistake or we were uncomfortable with the way they presented the information, we'll tell them that. We don't want to necessarily be angry at them. But it's good for them to know that we think they might have slightly missed the direction that it could have been covered. Okay, advertising. Advertising can be quite expensive, right? Yeah, well, maybe, maybe not. We're going to find out a little more from one of our clients in the room about that. Advertising does cost. How can we afford it? Uh, well, one thing you can do is create an advertisement that can actually become news in its own right. Uh, I don't know if you remember in that really old piece of tape from Australia just then, they were, they were talking about the IKEA commercial. I don't know, can anyone put their hands up if they have heard of the IKEA advertisement? Okay, see, quite a few of us know. Mike Wilkie, 
from who set up Commercial Closet in the US, who's a very good friend of our company, Mike assures me that that ad, and he would know, ran once. And we've all heard about it. We've all seen it. If you created an ad with an angle that could be news, maybe people could write about it. And you become part of the story and put the website address in your ad. That's always good because if they print it, it's good to have it. Uh, okay, so you're not Toyota, that's fine, but you could, you could afford to maybe create one ad and do a good press release about it and work your journalist database and go back to them and see it come up in Google and try all of these things one after the other. Um, you know, Qantas' first gay ads we worked on in Australia, but IKEA was one time only, and yet we all know about it. Okay, PR superstar. So gay, C can my PR superstar stand up? This is. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself and your company? Yeah, okay. Hi, guys. Um, I'm Andrew Roberts, and um, I'm the chief executive of Amro Worldwide, which is a company I started in my back bedroom seven years ago. And we're now the largest uh, gay tour operator and travel agent in the UK. Um, I, I, I don't want to steal Ian's thunder because I hope most of you um, knew about this story that um, hit. I think probably pretty strongly this side of the Atlantic. I got a phone call at about four in the morning, some, some friends in Long Beach, and said, hey, you've just been on our main news. And about two hours later, I got a call from Ian saying, go by the Independent, you're on page three. Um, th this was something that, just to give you a little bit of background, I'd always wanted to do, which was to take over one of the escalators on the London Underground system and plaster it with a series of advertisements promoting um, gay travel and particularly um, our company, Amro Worldwide. Um, we chose to go at Leicester Square, which is the station everyone would be going to for London Pride, and we chose to do it at the two weeks that covered the London Pride event. And I heard Ian speak at World Travel Market, and I needed somebody who could actually make this happen. I think Ian was desperately apprehensive to start off with, not that um, this was something that um, wasn't going to happen, was that whether I was actually going to find the money to do this, because this represented, I think, a investment of four times our annual marketing budget. And, and our smallest client we'd ever taken on. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, uh, what Ian didn't actually know was that I had been floating this around for a while beforehand, and I think probably within about three weeks we'd got six CVBs across the United States to partner with us um, to cover the costs of doing this. Um, and, and we launched it on the underground, we did a launch party, uh, we got a little bit of uh, publicity in the gay press, we got a little bit of publicity in um, the travel trade press who were quite interested in this. And I don't know if you're going to show the video. I'm, I'm going to go through it. I, I think that's a good background. And just yeah. for time reasons, what I would suggest is Andrew can tell you so much more about this. And it's a really fascinating story. We, we've got time for a slice of it, which I have. Well, just, just uh, to, to wrap this one up quickly, not, not to steal Ian's thunder, what was so successful about this wasn't actually that some plonker down in Columbia, South Carolina, made a homophobic statement. What made this story and the publicity that came out of it was actually the way Ian managed it from that point onwards. And it was continuing to come. And, and what is only a couple of months ago, we did another press release on this story that got the whole thing going. And, and that, to me, was the key, is you can, you can take advantage of something, and that's what makes it go global. And, and Ian was absolutely the right guy. He was in the right place. He understood it, and he just flew with this. And it's been a fantastic success for us um, on That's, both sides uh, of the Atlantic. I'm going to stop you, Ollie, because I wasn't actually looking for so many compliments. But thank you. <laughs> uh, but it was a great campaign. I mean, Andrew's right. He was the smallest guy that we'd worked with. 